Testing, testing, mic test, mic test. Testing, testing. Mic test, mic test. Um, okay, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to Flip Securities Research Weekly Market Outlook. Um, my name is Wei Wen. Today's agenda for today is um, first I'll take you through the market outlook, followed by Derek who will take you through the Singapore Equities Update and Roy who will um, feature GLP. So in terms of the market outlook, um, let's begin with the US. So essentially, um, first March has passed and the sequester has actually kicked in. There are just three things to note about the sequester. The first is that the sequester involves essentially 85 billion worth of automatic and across the board budget cuts for this fiscal year. The second thing to note is that um, the fiscal drag is likely to be gradual and will actually weigh more heavily on the second half of this year and should actually shift off 0.6 percentage point from calendar year growth of 2013 this year. The third point is this, but we, our house view is that um, this fiscal drag to some extent could actually be mitigated by emergency appropriations and hence um, we are actually downgrading our US GDP growth from 2.2 2.1 percent to 1.7 percent um, for the whole of 2013. So essentially a 0 0.5 percentage point revision. Um, after the first March sequester, the next date to pencil in will actually be the 27th March, where we could actually see a possible partial government shutdown if there's actually no bill passed to extend the routine government funding for federal programs and agencies. After which you have the 18 May debt ceiling as well as the need to negotiate a medium term deficit reduction deal. On the, Euro on the Eurozone front, the Italian elections last week were inconclusive. There are talks now of a Bosconi and Bersani Grand Coalition as we have um, mentioned last week. As long as Bersconi, the former PM, who is actually opposed any austerity measures. As long as he has executive power in the new government, Italian reform commitments will actually be in doubt. So what we saw last week was that Italian 10-year yields actually creeping up higher, but still below um, 7%, which is deemed to be unsustainable. This week, essentially tomorrow, you would see the National People's Congress meeting in China start. So essentially in this meeting, um, President Xi Jinping will officially take over the reins of the state. Things to look out for in this meeting will actually be um, the government's 2013 economic targets, reform measures, as well as um, property stabilization blueprint. Last week we mentioned about the Fed possibly exiting from large-scale asset purchases prematurely. So this week we like to delve deeper into um, what are some possible implications of such a move. Now, if back in the 90s, the US economy was actually in the doldrums, right? But in 94, January 94, it started improving, right? So from 94 to early 95, we saw a hike of around 300 basis points. And that actually led to a sell-off in bonds, right? But subsequently in 95, after the 300 basis point hike, we see that equity risk on actually resuming its climb. So this could actually be repeated if the Fed actually um, hikes prematurely this time around, especially if the US economy is on firmer ground. So in the US, um, last Friday, the S&P 500 um, 
struck off the budget cuts and actually much higher, as in actually rose higher on account of um, upbeat factory data as well as buoyant consumer sentiment. We expect the US markets to actually be supported by a strong capex rebound as well as increased M&A activity. Right? But um, it still faces strong technical resistance of around 1575. In Japan, um, we have mentioned in um, our commentaries that um, the Nikkei rally still has legs, right? So, and we ask our clients to actually look out for Kuroda's, which is the Bank of Japan nominee, to look out for his maiden comments at the house hearings this week. So indeed, uh, Kuroda actually spoke this morning, right? So his comments, he, he uttered the three magic words, which is to do whatever it takes to actually end deflation. And that provided a boost to the Nikkei this morning. So the Nikkei actually ran up quite a fair bit this morning. And um, we hope they're actually in the money right now. But then we caution that the Nikkei might actually sell the fact looking ahead, right? Especially when everything is mostly priced in. And there's also a possible dis disappointment of, on the 4th April maiden monetary policy meeting under the new Bank of Japan leadership. In China, um, the 5th March Parliament meeting tomorrow actually is the main event risk, depending on the measures, reform measures, as well as the property stabilization blueprint. It still faces, the CSI 300 still faces um, resist, strong resistance at 27 to 800 levels. The HSCI um, Indicators suggest that um, near-term weakness is likely to persist, right? And um, but then strong support will be at the eleven thousand level. For the HSI, the Hang Seng Index, um, near-term weakness, but um, there are signs of a possible turnaround, as indicated by your MACD as well as RSI, especially coming up from oversold levels last week. For the STI, is still crawling along the 10-day moving average. Um, Near-term support will be at the 3,250 level. And we think the STI is likely to take cue from um, what the Chinese government announced tomorrow, the US market's reaction to the sequestration, as well as the political developments in Italy. The KLCI is testing its 200-day moving average once more, and we think that there will be a distinct break in either direction only after the 13th general elections in view of the lingering political risk. For the Thai index, um, it's largely in consolidation mode right now, but um, it remains in a strong resilient uptrend and our Thai equity strategies forecast approximately 14% EPS growth. With that in mind, I'll pass on to Derek for the research updates for the week. <coughs> Hi everyone, this is Derek here speaking. Um, search updates for the week. <coughs> First one, Golden Agri uh, earnings came in below our expectations. Uh, it declined 29% year on year. The stock price reacted negatively um, on Friday as well. Uh, this is due to a blend of 9.5% uh, increase in CPO production. Uh, offset by lower CPO prices, which is down 11% on year. Uh, we adult, uh, lowered our earnings forecast by 15 to 16%, but we still expect upside to the stock uh, and maintain our accumulate rating on uh, Golden Agri. Penn United, we were quite spot on with our estimates and forecasted this raised dividends to four cents per share. Um, the outlook for the building materials business is still positive with the robust outlook. Uh, for the infrastructure investment in uh, Singapore. So with that, we maintain our buy recommendation with target price raised to 121. Hobi, uh, met the Metropolis is 60% pre-committed and we expect retail gains upon the completion of this project in second half 2013. And with the completion of this project, we expect um, higher uh, recurring income streams and boosters to its NAV. 
our uh, analyst uh, Brian actually upgraded his this his recommendation to buy with a target price of 229. Even at 229, it is uh, at a hefty 40% discount to RNAV of 382. Banking sectors, we um, pro provided some updates on that as well based on the MMAS uh, loan statistics. Uh, for the, best, the DBU loans actually increased 18% uh, in January. Uh, there were some concerns over the property cooling measures uh, as it could impact the housing loans growth uh, for the banking sector. Uh, reduction of in LTV for the car loans is a negative, but the impact is minimal if you compare that to the property uh, loans in Singapore. Uh, building a construction loan will continue to be a driver for this sector. For the stocks, we actually prefer UOB over DBS and OCBC. Transportation sector, if uh, you have been following our recommendation, you will know that we have been preferring the aviation services sector. Uh, the stock in this sector actually has done pretty well, uh, outperforming all the other stocks in the other subsectors. Uh, but we still continue to prefer this sector as we think that uh, the long-term trends and uh, is still positive. Their uh, valuations are not excessive um, relative to the other subsectors. Uh, for a lot of our clients who actually buy into the land transport sector for their stability, I would like to highlight that there's an abnormally high level of uncertainties facing the business model currently for the land transport operators. Uh, weak demand and outlook. Weak demand outlook and competitive businesses actually led to challenging operating environment for the cyclical airlines and shipping companies. And our recommendations are as follows. <coughs> for telecommunication sectors, uh, following the results update, we actually compiled some data on this sector. Uh, we found that Singtel actually gained the market share in both the mobile and the PATV side of the business. Uh, for going forward, uh, the ability of the telcos to actually monetize the data uh, for the mobile business would be a key to profitability of their business. Um, our analyst, Ken Ang, actually did an analysis and found that uh, the pay TV business for Starhub is likely to have uh, structurally lower profitability going forward. For the year ahead, we expect CAPEX to be elevated due to spectrum auctions, LTE rollout, and 3G enhancements. Uh, within the sector, we prefer Singtel over Starhub and M1. UOB, earnings beat our expectations on strong non-trading income and lower taxes. Dividend, a special dividend was um, introduced of 10 cents, was introduced, uh, taking the full year dividend per share to 70 cents per share. NIMS were down it basis, it basis points sequentially, uh, a little bit more than the other two banks. Near term outlook is likely to be muted due to sustained NIMS pressure in the near term. Uh, however, we maintain our accumulate rating on the stock for the year ahead. OUE, retail loss at the associate level, is a negative surprise to us. Uh, we expect potential upside from acquisitions and divestments of the hotel assets in the year ahead. Upgraded to uh, accumulate with a target price of 307. I'll hand over to Roy now to talk about GLP. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Roy Chen from Research. Uh, in the following session, I'm going to share with you my view on GLP. My scope of presentation consists of uh, GLP's overview followed by recent market events and the portfolio and financial highlights following by performance and outlook in all the three markets that GLP has operated in uh, and following by valuation and rating, then summary of all the uh, investment merits, then at the last, the key risks. Um, GLP overview. Uh, GLP is Asia's largest modern logistic properties provider. It is operating logistic facilities with market dominance in all three markets, China, Japan, and Brazil. It is managing a total of US dollar, uh, <coughs> uh, 16 billion US dollar property portfolio. And uh, 
the group has established a fund management platform where it partners with GIC, CPRE, CPPIB to develop and manage logistic properties. And the group is currently holding very strong de development pipelines in China and Brazil, the world's two biggest emerging markets. Uh, GLB's key strategy is to monetize mature portfolios, especially those in Japan, to facilitate development projects in high-growth emerging markets, referring to China and Brazil. Uh, here I'm going to uh, summarize the recent market events. Um, on 30th of November 2012, JLP has ventured into Brazil market uh, with GIC, with the partnership uh, with the partnership of GIC, CPPIB, uh, and the CBRE uh, through property acquisitions. Uh, following the acquisition, the partners directly uh, assumed the market dominance, and the uh, uh, acquisition was financed by a placement placement of 160 million ordinary shares uh, at an issue price of. Uh, $1.259 per share, uh, equivalent to approximately a discount of 4%. On 21st of December, GLP has completed an IPO of JRIT listed in Japan, and uh, subsequently GLP has disposed 33 out of its, 60, uh, it, its 68 wholly owned Japanese properties into the JRIT. GLP remains as the asset manager and subscribe itself a 15% effective stake of the J rate. And on 26th of uh, February, GIC, GLP's biggest shareholder, has sold 12.5% stake in GLP uh, at the price between 2.6 to $2.65 dollar, compared to a premium market pr uh, price of uh, $1.75. This, this, this action has sent GLP share price plunged to uh, three months low at $1.254. Uh, this uh, this slide shows you the breakdown of GLP portfolio, and uh, as uh, as you can see, the uh, the GLP has has been reducing its weight from Jap uh, uh, reducing its exposure to Japan, and gradually increasing its uh, exposure in China. Following the J rate uh, J rate disposal, GLP has uh, reduced its NAV uh, exposure to Japan. Uh, to uh, to forty five percent from previous fifty percent, and uh, oh, sorry from uh, forty five percent to thirty two percent. Well, well, in but in China, the weight of NAV has been increased to fifty percent from earlier forty five percent, and uh, approximately approximately one point one billion net sales proceeds uh, from this disposal will be. Will be deployed for future development, uh, especially those projects in China. So this slide shows you the key financial highlights. As you can see from the top right uh, top right corner, uh, we are expect uh, we at, uh, we are forecasting a pullback in the overall consolidated revenue for GLP in financial year 2014. Uh, this is due to the Recent recent disposal of uh, Japan properties to the J rate, as you can see, the our our estimate of uh, consolidated revenue from Japan has decreased from uh, 358 million US dollar in financial year 2003 to 198 um, um, 198 million US dollar in financial year 2004. But we also know, uh, we also believe that, uh, there will be a strong revenue growth in China due to the expected new development uh, new development completion. And uh, following the following the disposal to generate the as you can see from the left bottom corner chart uh, that the leverage, uh, the leverage ratios for GLP has been improving, and the total total debt to asset value has uh, decreased from ratio has uh, decreased from 29.4% to 23.5%, uh, and uh, net asset to net, net asset to uh, net net debt to asset value uh, ratio has decreased from 23.5% to 8.7%, um, and uh, this improved uh, gearing ratio uh, gearing ratio would 
allow GLP to take further opportunistic acquisitions in the future. And uh, on the chart, on the chart uh, uh, at the bottom right corner, you uh, we show we show you that the the robust growth of uh, pipeline. Uh, performance and outlook in China. Uh, as we were saying, we expect a very strong growth uh, of the revenue in China, and uh, from the uh, from the chart at the bottom left corner, uh, we, you, know, you can see that the the net property income margin has been quite stable uh, at about uh, some uh, seventy six percent, and we know that there is still upside potential. Uh, compared to Japan uh, and and Brazil, this uh, this NPI margin is quite uh, is quite low. And Japan is uh, having an NPI margin close to ninety percent, around 87 some eighty seven percent something. And for Brazil, the the NPI margin is even higher; it's between ninety percent to ninety five percent, according to the management di disclosure. Uh, so we believe uh, in the in the future, when most of the properties in China is stabilized. We believe there's still upside potential, um, and uh, as you can see from the uh, chart in uh, in the right bottom corner, the 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 lease ratio has been has been very high, uh, near ninety percent, and there is a melt peak, uh, there are, uh, there is a melt rise in the uh, effective effective rental, uh, all the way from zero point nine nine in financial year two thousand one one to 1.06 RMB per square per day in the third quarter of financial year 2013. The micro in China. Um, China has a GDP growth rate uh, of 7.8 percent in in 2012, and uh, actually the China the China economy has been bottoming out since the third quarter of last year, and uh, uh, it achieved. A GDP growth of 7.9 percent in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter of 2012. Uh, our uh, our projected growth for 2013 for China is 8.0 percent, and we believe this is a relatively uh, conservative estimate. Uh, the policy, the common policies has been accommodated for GLP's expansion in China. Um, according to the new new leadership, the common would forge a more balanced growth, with more focus on consumption rather than Previously, most mostly on the investment, and uh, we expect the urbanization progress to accelerate, uh, as the government is uh, striving to narrow the wealth gap, the, uh, which is currently quite wide in China, and the transport and logistic industry is one of the pillar industry in the government's 12th, 50th, 50th, five years plan, and uh, so we believe more accommodative policies will be given compared to those. Uh, residential and commercial pr uh, properties in China. Uh, from the uh, from the chart at the bottom bottom right corner, you can see um, the retail sales, which is a measure of the China ch uh, domestic consumption, has been quite uh, robust, and you can observe a, a mild pickup in the last few quarters. So we are saying that um, the the the, consum the consumption in China is quite Quite sound. Uh, logistic market in China. Uh, China has a fast-growing market with a scarcity a scarcity of modern logistic properties, and uh, this scarcity comes from two uh, aspects. One is that the current supply of logistic properties is not quite enough, and the second is that the quite a significant portion of this log uh, this these supplies are outdated. And need uh, need needs re renovation and demolition to meet the increasingly high uh, higher the uh, higher standard required. And uh, GLP uh, is at a privileged position to uh, take advantage of this scarcity uh, by by complete uh, by complete gross floor area. GLP is five times the second largest player in, in the industry. And for performance and outlook in Japan, uh, sorry, uh, we expect uh, we expect uh, 
decrease in consolidated revenue uh, due to the recent uh, uh, due to the recent sale uh, uh, property disposal to generate and uh, the relative uh, the NPI in Japan as we were saying before the it is relatively high and it is near 87 percent uh, it is around 87 percent um, the rental for uh, the the Japanese rental has been very stable uh, close to 1080 Japanese yen per uh, per square meter per month and even in this uh, environment of deflation and uh, uh, this ratio has been very high close to full load as you can see for the third quarter of financial year 2003 the least ratio the least ratio is 98 percent uh, Japan, uh, the Japan, Japanese economy is a uh, is like luster but we expect that the aggressive government loosening recent uh, recently could bright, brighten the ec economic outlook in, in the long term the new leadership has shown determination to stir the nation's economy through more aggressive monetary and fiscal policies. Uh, we have seen that the, the, stock market, the stock market has already rallied, but effects on real economy is yet to come. Um, as you can, uh, you can see, uh, actually in the, on the chart of uh, left bottom corner, uh, we can see the, the three months rolling export growth has already been stabilizing, uh, and this is due to the the, rich, the re very recent sharp decline of Japanese yen, which has helped boost the nation's exports. And, but in the for for the historical experience, as you can see from uh, the right uh, right bottom chart, uh, the chart on the uh, right bottom corner. Um, the predictable retail uh, the retail sales in Japan has been quite predictable. It is quite stabilized near uh, 135 trillion per year, and this is due to the as Jap uh, this is because Japan is uh, suffering a a shrinking population. So in the long run, there's there there does has re uh, there there's indeed risk uh, why the Japanese government can actually stir the economy through. Uh, the aggressive loosening. Uh, different from China, um, j j um, the scarcity of Japan, uh, the scarcity of modern logistic uh, properties is uh, only from the the needs for uh, quality, the needs for higher quality uh, logistic uh, logistic service supply. Uh, as modern as modern logistic properties represents only 2.5 percent of the total market supply, and GLP is also the largest modern logistic provider in Japan. Uh, in December of last uh, in November and December of last year. As uh, as we were saying, uh, GLP together with its partners has ventured into the Brazil market, and Brazil market is actually the the second largest developing economy with a very decent retail sales growth. Um, on average, the uh, Brazil GDP has been expanding on uh, by an average rate of four percent uh, from 2005 to 2011. But recently, actually, the economy is suffering a stag uh, a stagnation. Um, it's uh, stagnated in the first half of two uh, of two one two, but as you can see from the bottom uh, from the chart of bottom right, um, there was a there there was a nascent uh, pickup ongoing, and uh, from uh, from the chart on the bottom left, you can see the retail sales. Even though the economy is like last uh, in the past, but the retail sales volume growth rate has been quite uh, robust. And it is in an upward trend. On average, uh, the retail sales has been expanding at a rate of eight um, percent. The logistic market uh, landscape of Brazil and China are quite alike. Uh, they all have very significant potential demand, but there is only very limited supply. And the modern logistic facilities is also quite scarce in the in the group. Uh, against the total supply, um, 
which represents only 20% of the total supply. And GLP, as we were seeing after the acquisition, GLP has directly assumed the market leadership in Brazil market. And, uh, it, it, and at the same time, it also holds very strong development pipeline, which could further consolidate GLP's market dominance in Brazil. Uh, GLP is also has has been also expanding its fund management platform, and uh, this fund management platform was established as a vehicle for GLP to monetize its stabilized portfolios, especially those in Japan, uh, in order to facilitate the financing of future development, uh, especially uh, for those in China and Brazil. Uh, the expansion of fund management platform has uh, will will reward the group with growing asset and development management fees income in the future. Uh, as you can see from the chart on the right, the total um, asset and the management has tripled after the recent Brazil acquisition. The J-rate monetization and additional capitalization in the Japan Development Fund, which was the uh, which is the JLP CPPIB joint venture. Uh, so this slide talk uh, discuss about our valuation by RNAV method, we estimate that GLP's 214 target price will be at a uh, Singapore dollar 2.77, which is equivalent, equivalent to a forward PB ratio of 1.13 times, or um, oh, 8.7% upside potential from the previous close at a uh, Singapore dollar 2.55. The recent 12.5% uh, of sale by GIC does not affect our view on GLP fundamentals. We still believe that the the, the business is quite strong, uh, uh, but we maintain our neutral rating in the consideration of the continuous weakening yen. And the market consensus actually is about uh, Singapore dollar 2.9. But actually, uh, but we believe uh, it has not accounted for the risk, uh, the recent sharp Japanese yen depreciation. So this slide uh, has a summarize uh, has a, has summarized the all the investment merits for GLP. Um, firstly, GLP has a market leadership in all the three markets, three markets: China, Japan, and Brazil, and where supply the, the where the supplies of the Modern logistic properties are scarce, and secondly, GLP had very strong development uh, pipelines in two of the biggest developing markets, China and Brazil, which are currently undergoing economic recoveries and the robust consumption growth, especially in China, where urbanization progress is expected to accelerate after the government power handover. Uh, thirdly, low gearing with ample cash on hand will allow GLP to take fast response to for uh, future business expansion opportunities, uh, such as from uh, organic growth as well as acquisitions. Uh, last but not least, expanding the expanding fund management platform will reward GLP with growing high quality, growing high quality uh, property development and management fees in the future. Uh, the biggest risk, uh, the biggest risk, uh, risk we see for GLP is the forex risk uh, of China and Japanese yen depreciation, especially the Japanese yen depreciation, uh, as it is quite volatile compared uh, against U.S. dollar. Um, also, there's there uh, it could be, uh, there could be possible reviving Japan Japanese inflation, which works against the current fixed in a uh, fixed term rental, and uh, which would uh, surprise the profit margin of the group. Uh, Another risk would be the weaker than expected uh, economic recovery in China, which could result in soft leasing activities, therefore the cutbacks in the development start. Um, and uh, the uncertainties of entering an unfamiliar market, uh, Brazil, is, could be also another source of risk. Uh, so this slide discussed the recent, the, the recent, the very recent sharp decline of yen. Um, as we were saying, despite that the company's fundamentals remains very strong, our estimate of 214 target price has been significantly reduced due to the, re the recent depreciation of yen, and uh, without which our target price would be around uh, Singapore dollar 2.94, which is quite close to the market consensus. 
Following the government's committed aggressive mantra loosening, Japanese yen has depreciated over 20%, as you can see from the chart below, uh, since October 2012. And the previous level is unlikely to be reverted in the near term as the aggressive loosening is ongoing. So we caution that GLP would, uh, I mean, so, so we caution that the Japanese yen could decline even further given the possibility of the for the um, monetary loosening by the government, which would uh, weigh on GLP's valuation. Okay, so with that slide, I, I end my presentation. We welcome any questions. Good morning, everyone. I'm Travis. There's a question on uh, comment on the IPO of Maple Tree Greater China Commercial Trust. Is it a recommended to subscribe to the IPO? Uh, we have not uh, written an IPO fact sheet on uh, Maple Tree Greater China Commercial Trust, but what I can say that the yield of 5.6% for 2013 is attractive as compared to uh, Fortune REITs and Capital China Retail Trust yeah. as both have uh, exposures well the Fortune REIT has exposures in uh, suburban retail malls in Hong Kong and Capital China Retail Trust has exposures in the in China so they are sort of uh, good comparables and I'd like to remind you that the 5.6% you for Maple Tree Commercial, uh, Greater China Commercial Trust does not take into account of any asset enhancements. So with that, they actually can grow their yield to 6.1% at the current IPO price of 0.93 cents. So if they were to take on any asset enhancement, the yield can be even higher. The only um, bugbear is that um, because of the high gearing of 43%, um, the potentials of uh, acquisitions in near term, say two to three years, will be limited. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Um, Joshua here. On um, okay, there's a question on Pan United, given the uh, manpower tightening in the construction sector. Um, okay, well. I think regardless of whether there's manpower tightening or not, there are certain infrastructure gaps that need to be addressed um, by by Singapore, and um, the government has already highlighted that um, those infrastructure gaps will be addressed. Okay, so um, from that perspective, I think the infrastructure pipeline for Pan United is the same as it was before, an extremely strong one. Okay, and the thing about um, these manpower tightening things. I think it'll affect construction companies which are number one very uh, which are not uh, very productive yet, and it will affect margins for construction companies, and um, it will certainly um, slow down their pace of construction of projects undertaken in the private sector. Now, Pan United is none of these because it's not a construction company; it's it supplies building materials, ready mix concrete. Again, most of their labor force is skilled locals. Um, so they will not be really af um, adversely affected by the manpower tightening. And um, their margins, like I said, will not uh, really be affected um, because, you know, it's not a construction company. It's not um, earning that kind of 5% margin. The margins at Penn are much fatter than that. Okay, so anyway, we've raised our um, target price of Penn United to 121. I think the stock has run up quite a bit. It exceeded our previous target price of 88 and is now consolidating in the 90s, um, in the 90 cents level. So, um, yep, I was still positive on the stock. Thanks. OK, 
Okay, I'll take the GLP questions one by one. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, who are GLP's competitors and uh, how GLP is compared to them? Uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, GLP operates in all the uh, in three markets: China, Brazil, and Japan. And uh, so, uh, GLP's presence in the market is quite unique. Therefore, it's quite hard to find uh, comparables in the Singapore market. Uh, sorry. Uh, but as you can see from from the slides, sorry. Uh, in for example, in China, the, the uh, these companies, uh, the name listed in the chart of the bottom right corner, um, are the main competitors of GLP in the local market. Yeah, as GLP is operating in all the three markets, so it's very hard for a competitor in that regard uh, to GLP. And GLP has the, as I was saying, the GLP, the GLP has uh, the market dominance in all the three markets. And the next question, uh, what is the name of, full, uh, what is the full name of CPPIB? CPPIB is short for uh, Canada uh, Pension Plan Investment investment board and what is the terms of uh, GLP's J rate and GLP J rate and GLP um, okay the J rate is managed by an asset management firm which is a wholly owned subsidiary of GLP and pursuant, pursuant to the asset management agreement and assigned between J rate and the uh, asset, asset management company the J rate will pay an asset-based management fee uh, and uh, net operating income-based fee as well as earnings per unit-based fee to the asset management uh, company. And in addition, the J rate also pays the asset management company acquisition fees and disposition fees in connection with the acquisition and disposition of properties. Yeah, so this is the term. And... Uh, what is the reasons why GIC is selling such a huge volume of shares? Um, we believe um, this is only a, a portfolio balance a portfolio balancing action by the GIC, and still GIC is still the biggest shareholder in G, uh, in GLP. The full name of NPI NPI is short for Net Property Income from where the technology of in GLP from where GIC can be a financial investor CBRE just a realtor uh, uh, GLP has actually acquired um, the, the the patent for some kind of uh, uh, pro uh, Property de uh, logistic property uh, logistic uh, property development, and uh, so I would say that the technology in GLP is just from the technology for for development of GLP uh, is just their own. What is the market shares of GLP in China market? Uh, the market share of GLP in China market. Let me see. Uh, as you can see from the slides, uh, this slides, uh, GLP is five times the second largest player in by, uh, by complete by complete gross floor area in China. So um, the dominance in G of GLP in China is quite strong, and uh, if you sum sum all the GFA of our of all the rest uh, competitors, then you, you may get a, roughly get an idea uh, how much there is a share of GLP. The contract, okay, sure. Later I'll send you. I'll find it and send you. Thank you.
so So, uh, this is Travis. I to add on to the Maple Tree uh, Greater China Commercial Trust. Actually, we like about this feed because uh, there is no uh, DPU supports and uh, sponsor waivers that what you have seen in the recent uh, IPO for business trust and for property business trust and uh, REITs. For example, like the Ascenders Hospitality Trust, they actually have a sponsor waiver yeah, to artificially boost the DPU. But if you can, but if you know that the, if you have been, if you understand that the Maple Tree like, they do not have uh, this two um, tools to um, artificially inflate the DPU, so I think it's a very clean structure. Yeah. Uh, hi, Car Five Fong. Uh, I will contact you directly regarding your questions on the IP rights of uh, IP, uh, the payment of IP rights to patent owner. Okay. Hi, uh, this is Travis again. There's a question on the sponsor waiver. Can you elaborate why is this? Um, the sponsor waiver, because the sponsor actually um, subscribe. For example, for Maple Tree Greater China Trust, I think, I think if I'm not wrong, they subscribe to 32 or to 35% on, uh, on the trust, on the reads. So let's say um, every quarter that the REITs will distribute um, dividends to the shareholders and what the sponsor did will do will they will forego the dividend they are entitled to and this will redistribute back to the shareholders. As for Maple Tree Greater China Tr Commercial Trust, they do not have these uh, tools to boost their DPU. So I think it's a very clean structure. The IPO for retail investors will be closed on uh, 5th of March tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. So uh, for those uh, who are interested to subscribe to Maple Tree Greater China Commercial Trust, they can subscribe before tomorrow afternoon. There's another question on Maple Tree Greater China Commercial Trust. Whether is it more worthwhile to subscribe to Suntech Read? price below NEV and there is uh, no uh, forex risk. Um, I think we shouldn't uh, compare them uh, together because one is the China, the exposures is in China and Hong Kong, the other secondary exposures is in in uh, Maple Tree, this is in uh, Singapore. So actually, when if you want to compare some territory, you actually want to compare it with a Maple Tree Commercial Trust rather than the Greater China. Although the the NAV is trading at the below NAV, yeah. It this will be depends on the um, investor whether they want to have exposure in China or they want to have exposure in Singapore. Yeah. I think that's all I have. Okay, um, I think um, we don't have any more questions from the floor. And um, thank you very much for um, staying with us this morning. And um, we would welcome you to um, uh, stay tuned uh, for the next Monday webinar, same time. Thank you very much.